Shalom YouTube. It's Mad Cow. I was going to ask how you're doing, but I guess we're probably all pretty much doing about the same. Um, so, our potato in chief has decided that he's going to make as many people as is humanly possible take the thing. So, <clears throat> my company has got more than a hundred people, so that affects us. I'm full-time work at home. I have been full-time work at home since, I don't know, eight years, nine years, something like that. So I do not come in contact with any other employees of my company, none of my team members. So are they going to make us do the thingy? Don't know yet. But my answer is no. I did a lot of praying about it, a lot of thinking about it, spent a bunch of time in my word, talked to a number of my brothers that uh, are spiritually minded and, and, and walking the same walk I'm walking. <clears throat> and the conviction that I have is no, period. No. Not going to do it. Don't care what extensions or, or um, they put on it. I don't care what, uh, you know. No. The answer is no. So in my heart, in my soul, in my head, I am convicted. The answer is no. We'll see what happens. But along with no, it's consequences. They can say very clearly, Mad Kelp, if you don't do this, you're fired. And I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to file my religious exemption first. And See how that goes, but from what I'm hearing, 99% of those, they're not even looking at, let alone honoring. So I had to sort of uh, figure, okay, if I don't have a job anymore, what am I going to do? <clears throat> I've spent a number of my years preparing for things to get stupid. That's what we do, right? We, per we prep so that we can promote normalcy in times of chaos. We also prep so that we have the ability to say no when the time comes to say no. So... I can eat for two plus years. That's not a problem. Um, I've got just enough wood to last me probably through the winter. I'm going to get another quart of wood just to top off and make sure. Um, I've got enough in uh, in my emergency fund to cover my uh, my expenses for a few months. And that's not by accident. You know, I don't go out to shows and I don't go out and eat. And I don't buy stuff I don't need. And I don't buy jinglies and janglies and, and you know, silver and gold plated 
whatever's. I don't know. My TV is 20 something years old. I got a big old huge box tube TV. I'm driving a 10 year old car that I just had to put a bunch of money into. Did most of the work myself. Keep that running. I don't have a car payment. I don't have any debt other than my mortgage. And. comes down to it, I could say no. I have a little bit of time to figure out what I'm going to do after I say no and after they say, Basi. Consequences. We're standing up for our convictions. Right? What does Yeshua say? If you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. Look what James tells us. So my answer is no. No qualifications. Well, you could just get, you know, get your jab. No. Well, you'll have to get tested every week. No. I'm not around other employees. I don't go into the office. I'm asymptomatic. No reason for me to get tested. No. Life will get hard. Fully aware of life will get hard. You may lose the house. Okay. I also know from spending a bunch of time in my word that standing by my conviction, doing what my father tells me to do, that he will provide for me. He may not provide me a McMansion and a brand new pickup, but he will provide for me. You know, that's where I am. Because I get the feeling that things are going to get stupid fairly quickly. Um, if you've already gotten the thingy don't think that life is going back to normal don't think that you'll be well those poor unjabby people they, that's going to be suck for them it's suck for you too for a lot of reasons and I don't begrudge anybody getting the jab if that's what you were convicted to do you go do you I'm just not. And my inalienable rights given to me by my creator and codified, not given to me by, but codified by our Constitution, our Bill of Rights. Everything that's happening goes against that. They've taken and torn that piece of paper up. So we're going to do whatever we want to do. Well, push me. Give it a shot. And the potato in chief said some interesting stuff in his little uh, mumbly mumbly thing. We said there's 170. That 170 million vaccinated people and 80 million unvaccinated people. Now, I'm a redneck, but I can do a little bit of math. That comes out to carry the one 240 million people. How many people in this country? Last time I checked, my census data I looked at. It's 350 million. Where's those other 110 million? Are they all kids? Which 
they're gonna jab anyway. Hmm. But we'll see what happens. He said that his patience is wearing thin with us. My patience has been thin for more than a little bit. So maybe there's patience thin on both sides. Which usually doesn't lead to a peaceful resolution of conflict. But, to quote Greta Thunberg, how dare you tell me that your patience is wearing thin with me because I'm, ex I'm, I'm exercising my constitutional rights. Because I get to decide what goes in my body and what doesn't. Your patience is wearing thin with me? All right. What are you doing, crazy dog? Crazy dog's being crazy dog. So. <clears throat> There's no going back to normal from this. The powers that be have overstepped their bounds. They don't even know what our line was. And they're going to keep coming. And keep coming. And keep coming. And I have the ability, for the time being, to say no. I'm going to continue to say no, no matter what their consequences and their restrictions are. Right up to and including and jabbing my dead Irish corpse. But I gotta think that <clears throat> this has gotta be, at least in part, how our founders felt in the early 1770s when they just started saying, no, we're not gonna do that. And not just no, but fuck no. We're not doing that. We're not playing that game. We're not going to let you do this to us. So we know that the enemy is the prince of this world, at least for a time. He's laughing his ass off. Watching the goings on. So, I'm getting tighter with my Savior, getting tighter with my Father in Heaven. Because I'm going to really, really need their help. I'm going to really, really need their strength and their power to continue to say no. And I know people who have said, I'm going to say no. And then they went and did the thing. Why'd you do the thing? Well, because I was going to lose my job, and I didn't want to lose my house. And I'm worried about that. Okay. But I'm not going to do the next thing. Yeah, you are. Because the same conditions that exist now will exist then, if not harder. So this is my line in the sand. No. Each and every one of us is going to have to look and say, what's my line in the sand? What am I willing to say no to? And then ask for and utilize the strength that's given to us by the only power that really matters to be able to say no. That means I wind up living in a wet cardboard box in the woods. That's what happens. 
Well, you could say that, Matt Kelp, but you're not. Watch me. That's all we can do. You know, I keep waiting for that uh, email from corporate saying, we need your status by X date. My status will be, no. Am I worried? Not really. I have the strength and, and the conviction that my Father in Heaven is going to take care of me. I'm concerned. I'm looking around at my stuff going, how much do I have? What, do I, you know, what, what corners do I need to fill up? You know, they take away my job. I can pay my mortgage and my electric and my phone and, you know, my cable for a few months. And then what happens after that? We've got a plan. Y'all don't need to know exactly what the plan is, but that kill's got a plan. So what's your no? What's your this far and no farther? And if you say no, what are the consequences of that going to be? Start preparing for that. Because <clears throat> there is no back to normal. We are never going to do, it's never going to, they've gotten too much power. They're never going to say, hey, we hit X threshold. All restrictions are off. Y'all go about your business. Have a nice day. Ain't gonna happen. So, I expect things are going to get, and things have happened faster than I anticipated. You know, I figured we had a couple of years. Might be a couple of months. Could be next week. But in any case, I've spent the last decade plus putting myself in a position where I could say no. So yeah, that's about all I really wanted to tell you guys was no. Things are going to get stupid. And I'm going to keep saying no. And, you know. We'll see what we see. But I also just wanted to say to those of you who are on the fence with what you're going to do. Do you have that relationship with your Father in Heaven? Do you have that relationship with your Messiah? You ask to be filled with the Ruach HaKadosh, with the Holy Spirit, to be given the answer that you need to give. Yeshua says in the Gospels that uh, when they persecute you, when they imprison you, when they interrogate you, don't worry about what it is that you're going to say. I'll give you the words. It's kind of where I am. Sobering times. It's not all doom and gloom. I got to go out and, and hang out with the groom servant of death this weekend. We screwed one of his cannons to the treehouse so that he could play pirate. You know. So, yeah, that was fun. We did that. We did a bunch of other stuff. I'm going to make a road trip with uh, another brother the end of the week so that we can go and, and spend some coat with like-minded people. So I've been making comfy chicken like crazy. We bring a whole bucket of comfy chicken and 
bunch of cheeses I made and some pickles and you know some other stuff and we'll bring that down to share with, the, with our brothers and sisters who believe the way that we do and who also have spent a bunch of time and effort putting into their ability to be able to say no. No. Shalom, you too.